this is neat. It's a very small streetlight manufactured in the UK called an ESD Highway Diamond. It's a very smart little light. The size, well, it fits on the bench. Now, it's very similar initially in appearance to another one I looked at that had all the electronics on the LED panel, but this one has the traditional driver. And if anything, it's got a slightly more engineer-friendly design. So sizes, and then I'll show you it lit, and then we'll take it to bits. Sizes, from one end to the bit that goes onto the pole, it's 13 to half inch or 340 millimeters, but this bit can be taken off and turned round so for vertical mounting uh, or tilted at angles. So it could theoretically be about, say, 10 or 11 inches long, 250 mil, something like that. It's a very small light. This is good. It's also nice and manageable. Smart. The circuit board they've got inside, ASD lighting here it says, uh, says Osram Oslon. That is the type of LEDs they've used in this, which is a premium LED. That's nice. Other things worth to mention on this, I'll take this out in fact afterwards. We've got the two power connections and we've got an NTC thermistor connection. And there's the thermistor there just for monitoring the temperature in the head. Um, although in this particular light, it's not used because uh, it's quite a low power. It's only about 25-ish watts it takes. On the other side, we have a Zodion uh, dusk sensor, a basic one just with three connections. This is an anema socket. The anema socket traditionally just had three pins, live, neutral and switch live, but the new ones uh, have the extra four pins for, that are exposed in the top here. Uh, which are for Smart City and DALI, and this one is wired to use the DALI if used, but it's not used in this one. Note that these are exposed, but they wouldn't pretend to give you a shock if it was powered, because the point of the DALI is it tends to be powered from the controller. So in the case of putting on one of those remote control facilities, this would have a small power supply that would send the signal back down into the unit. So let's turn it on. I shall cover this over and we'll monitor the power consumption. I couldn't find my shunting cap for this. This streetlight has seen some use but was swapped out for another one just, I think, to increase the brightness in that particular area. Uh, it's currently connected into my Cliff Quick Test, which is the little piano keys here, and it's got the little isolation prongs that I used to use a lot, but I've been using more of my sort of cheapy Chinese non-compliant factory type. Uh, test units. I'm going to bring in the anti for this to do the power tests and I shall plug it in now by covering this over. It is plugged in and it's showing 26 watts. So there are some losses with the, for a start, the little, the neon indicator uh, draws about 0.4 watts. Oh, I've actually let enough light in to actually turn this off. Uh, but power factor was about 0.91, I think. The power factor's shot down to 1.5, point, 0.15, should I say, because it is now um, uh, just running the capacitive dropper in the dusk sensor. I was hoping this was going to come back on again, but I've obviously let too much light from the bench onto the sensor, so that will curtail that. Okay, right. Um, let's open it. So I shall unplug it. Get the stuff out of the way. Standby current, typically, was showing us 0.6 watts with the Zodion detector here, but a chunk of that was the neon in the Cliff Quick Test, a good chunk of it, so it's basically a quarter of what I'd say is being dissipated in this, which is good because uh, it will mean there's a bit of slight warmth in here, which keeps electronics warm in winter uh, during the day. I will open this up at some point. Things worthy of note, there is the actual light sensor there, and there's a probably capacitive dropper capacitor here. Uh, there's a track that's switching the load, and there's a little track next to it which may be actually buffering up from the low control signal to actually allow a more robust track to be switched. That's an interesting approach. This will be destroyed in the process of taking it apart. They always do. It's just they're, they're well sealed. I'll put that over there, out the way. Now, this one wins super points for being engineer friendly. If I just get the hand down here and just click this catch, it pops open, then lifts up, swings back, and now we get access to the interior. So I shall uh, focus down to a more sensible height where we can see stuff here. There should have been a cord restraint here. This is going to annoy. 
AI Stephen to see what happens with their stuff in real life. But someone has just snapped that off because they obviously couldn't have bothered uh, putting it in place. They've also not done a great job of terminating the wires. There's a bit, quite a bit of the copper sticking out here, but at least it's well away from stuff in the vicinity. This is partly, and I won't go into a rant here, this is partly because uh, the street light industry is notorious for using a four-hour slideshow to allow the use of labourers to do electrical work. I don't approve of that. There is a screw down here that screws this, holds this captive, this incoming socket connector. Uh, it would be nice if this could have just been unplugged in situ, the male part of it here. But uh, unfortunately, it doesn't go back far enough to unplug. That would have been a nice feature. Um, yeah, they could have done a better job of that, couldn't they? But they didn't. Oh, they've also broken quite a few of the strands. Yes. Skilled labour isn't cheap. Cheap labour isn't skilled. They went for cheap labour isn't skilled. That was a rant again. My apologies, I shall stop ranting. It's nothing to do with the quality of this light, which is quite high, actually. So, there is another connector in here. This would have been nice for us to pop it off for local isolation, but it doesn't really matter. The fact you can actually unscrew that and then take this out makes it terminating the wires in a lot easier. Uh, this connector here pops off. This is the one that leads to the NEMA connector. There is live and neutral using black and white wires going to the NEMA connector. That just it seems to be a standard for the colour for that. But the connector that comes back does actually have all the connections connected. That's interesting. It's got the uh, switched live coming back in the red. It's got the dally, I think that's on the... Yeah, the dally is on the grey and the purple. And the smart city is on the brown and the orange. Quite handy, that can just be popped out for, for easy service. Let's leave it plugged in. There is the LED panel, the temperature sensor connector is not connected, the uh, power from the driver is connected to that. We'll take that circuit board out, I don't know where the best, maybe I'll just uh, pop the wires out here. Grey is positive and white is negative for some reason. So we have uh, the DALI network coming up here to these two connections on what is a standard uh, Tridonic driver. Tridonic used to make ballasts for fluorescent light fittings in the long distance. Then, as the lighting industry changed to down halogen downlights, they adapted the ballasts to become transformers, and they also made uh, ballasts for discharge lights. And well, they've evolved, and they're making the electronic drivers. Uh, we'll probably take a look in this as well, but uh, it's going to be stuff with electronics. It always is stuff with electronics. Uh, that's assuming it's easy to open in the first place or get out. But we'll have a go at that. Uh, anything else worth mentioning here? It is supremely accessible. Other things worth mentioning about that is that it is pointing up the way. If it was mounted in the post, it is pointing up the way, meaning you've got daylight. You're not doing some of those street lights that the flap opens down the way and then you're working upwards with the sky creating a contrast. It's much easier to work in something like this. Also, if this is mounted at a slight angle, as it would, uh, the lowest point here is the uh, hole here, so water will drain out the fitting instead of building up in the fitting, which is also very good. But it's got a decent seal around it as well. Right. Um, anything else worth mentioning? Not right now. So let's remove the LED panel and take a look. So I'll pause briefly while I do that, just so you don't have to watch me hunting around for screwdriver and then just grinding out all the screws here. One moment, please. It has been disassembled. Let's explore. So the back of the LED panel has a graphite type thermal transfer panel. That's quite neat. It's the first time I've seen it inside a streetlight. I've kind of broken this here just through my destructive removal, which caused more destruction than expected. So now you've seen the graphite section at the back of this. Let's remove this. Now I've patted the graphite reassuringly. Here is the LED panel and the reason uh, one of the lens plates has been removed isn't, I mean, I wouldn't have removed it ordinarily, but I broke this connector. This connector is one of these push-in connectors and it's got these little dimples at the back, looks like the ones that you push down, but I was thinking I don't really see the push-down mechanism and I pushed it down and it popped down and broke the blooming solder pads off the back of the circuit board. So if you have one of these, 
be aware that can happen. Also be aware that if that does happen, because there are resistor positions mounted around the perimeter for actually switching in sections of LEDs so you can have multiple arrays. In this case, it's using the whole lot, so none of those are populated. But they can be linked to actually allow you to narrow down to a smaller number of LEDs. Be because of that, uh, you can use, if you break this connector off and rip the tracks up like I've done, you can connect the positive to this pad here, and you can connect the negative to this pad up here. Just worth knowing. The unit came apart very easily. Here's the lens. The lenses are super duper precise. Very interesting. They must be made by a specialist contractor because uh, there's a lot of science in uh, lenses like this. The cover, the very robust front cover, came off uh, very easily. I didn't need to use excessive screwdriver force. Just a little uh, precision screwdriver was more than enough to remove that. And the seal was very deep and sticky. It, but it had sealed on well. It's very good. Um, here are the Oslon LEDs, though. I think a hard lens they've got a relic it's not a it's not a gel lens it does feel like hard plastic let's tap them yeah hard lens leds i wonder how long they'll last uh, in general use but it's worth mentioning that uh, in the specification of these leds they actually bin them that is they put them into the different categories uh, at 85 degrees celsius they do a proper test on them it's interesting is that a 10K resistor? Let's test that. Let's put this to 20K. Oh, turns it turns the meter off instead of on. And let's go to these terminals. Mm. Let's try it up at 200K. Am I getting at anything? Hold on. I don't think it'll be higher than that. I may, might just not be getting a connection here. Oh, it's about uh, 120. So it's 100k. Is that right? Hold on. No, I'm talking crap. It is indeed a 10k sensor. Right, that's fine. I expected that. It's a very common uh, type of sensor. Now, here is the driver. Well, this is interesting. Now, I've looked at other drivers. I've looked at the Philips Zitanium drivers. Let's brighten this image up just a wee tiny bit, shall we? I've looked at the Philips Zitanium drivers in the past, and there is an app that you can read them because they have a, a NFC coil here for programming them and analysing them. And I've looked at the Osram ones, and they have their own app. It'd be nice if there's one app at all. And it turned out I had to download yet another app for Tridonic. Let me bring that in, though, and show you the results. I shall turn the screen intensity up a bit for this. So I'll just unlock my phone here, uh, go to settings and uh, increase the screen intensity so you can see what's going on here. Display, uh, and I'll just increase up to a decent brightness. I normally keep the screen quite dark on my phone. So we can go to for service NFC. Uh, and I'll just go back here and I'll press the NFC button here. Now I hold the NFC coil over and it's detected it and it's reading the data. I don't know how fast it reads the data, but here we go. It's showing me a picture of the unit and uh, it's telling me it's set for 600 milliamps. You can usually program these uh, externally by, say, you could set to 300 milliamps. Some of them, uh, the apps come with warnings saying you can damage this, you can damage the LEDs by programming them up to 900 milliamps or something like that. Um, automatic detection is the operating mode. I don't know what that is. Detection of the voltage across the LEDs, not really sure. But then it does interesting things. Watch this, I'll zoom down this. It says mains over voltage counter, it counts over voltage spikes in the mains, and it counts mains under voltage spikes. So it is snitching you in if any little instance happen out there with the uh, with the actual LED module. It says total operation time. Oh, hold on then. Hold on, hold on. Uh, that's how long the unit has been in use. Let's bring the kink calculator in here. Uh, 19,000... 
68 hours, what do you reckon? 8 hours a night divided by 8 hours a night equals... Well, I've just pressed the wrong button there. 1968 divided by the 8 hours equals... Uh, it, it was up for 246 nights. That's uh, It's been... It's seen some use. Maximum gear temperature went to 69 degrees Celsius. That's not bad. bad. Critical temperature reached counter, so it's never been that hot. Uh, and the data logging for the LED says thermal shutdown counter, thermal overload counter, but nothing, nothing has been connected. Uh, minimum module temperature, max module temperature. I'd guess that's because it's not detecting the temperature, but it is detecting short circuits and open circuits. Mm, interesting. So I'll have to explore that app and see what other features it offers. Um, if it actually allows the direct programming, and it usually does. You can usually set the current just by your app um, or dedicated units. But these uh, power supplies, these drivers are a weak bit in all LED lights because look at the amount of circuitry in it. It has a, probably, well, it's got microcontroller on here. There may be another microcontroller elsewhere. There is a division between these two sections of circuitry. I would expect, is that going to be the DALI interface? Um, some of these have loads of extra circuitry. This is pinned in. I don't think it's coming out in a hurry. Oh, no, hold on. I may be wrong. Uh, lots of circuitry in the back, uh, including possibly an LED driver chip and some transient suppression dads, the look of it. But these things are complicated. There's a lot to them to get that good power factor. It just, uh, they are, I mean, you've got two electrolytic capacitors down here that will potentially, and one over here that will potentially be the bits that fail. These bits on here is that are going to fail because these are in the output to the DC. Um, and they will inevitably over time, they'll just uh, start failing. And then I presume because it's computerized, it will actually uh, know that it's failing and uh, shut off. Uh, but there we have it. Uh, it's nicely made. It's breakable if you if you don't know what you're doing when you take that apart. Remember, this is uh, this is captive wires. You can't get them out. Just remember that if you ever have one of these and take it to bits. A single rivet holds the uh, the lens assembly on. But uh, as I said, you can also just patch onto these leads if you do if you do break it. Uh, but there we have it. Nicely made. Uh, good quality LEDs. Look of it. Good quality optics. Good quality construction. It is what I was expecting of the ASD light. So there we have it. Uh, a chunky, uh, attractive and functional little light. Uh, a very well-built and well-designed little device. Very nice indeed.